What's going on, everybody? Tolbert 2 Games back at it again with another teaching charting. Um, it's been almost two years since the last video that I put out on uh, Moonscraper, and so much has changed since then. The software has improved, I've improved in my charting, uh, and the community as a whole has grown. Um, so what I'm going to do is go walk through some of the new updates in the new Moonscraper version. I'm currently on version 1.4.3.4. I don't know if that's the most recent that you can get, but it is uh, currently the one that I have on my computer installed, and it's definitely uh, a far leaps and bounds above what we were using two years ago. Um, so to go ahead and get started, we're going to go get through some differences in audio, some syncing things that I've improved on, and go ahead and just run through a quick chart from front to back and cut through a couple of different highlights and features that I definitely think I need to be touching on to update my last video. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I'm going ahead and pulling up the download for the audio that I'm going to be using. Um, I've been recommended this free dash mp3 dash download.net uh, for higher quality audio purposes because a lot of the websites that I had been using previously uh, were ripping some uh, pretty bad audio for a couple of songs, which granted, if that's what you need it for and you just need it for yourself, that's totally fine. But what you really want to do is you want to get either a really high quality MP3, um, which you can do here, or FLAC download. So the FLAC is a lot better in terms of audio quality. The um, levels will just be a lot more fine-tuned. The dynamics will stick there and a lot of the, the fidelity will stay as well. Uh, I've already got and downloaded this for us today, so we don't have to wait as that goes. Um, so I have the FLAC audio file here. So one of the things that you can do if you don't want to use the FLAC, um, specifically if you don't have any kind of audio editing software, I would just go ahead and say use the MP3 and then uh, it should be fine. It's not going to be perfect, but it should be totally fine from there. So what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull up uh, Adobe Audition or whatever audio, um, audio editing softwares that you want to use. Uh, Audacity should be fine. Um, I don't know how well it deals with FLACs, but my guess is any high quality audio editing is gonna be able to read it pretty well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go in and open this FLAC. Just check our volumes here. You can see it's going through. Let's scrub it a little bit. That's pretty good. So what we are gonna do, export this file as an OGG, which is that audio that uh, Moonscraper really likes dealing with, and in the exports to Clone Hero, it uses OGG. Um, so there are multiple different OGG types. I've been using the higher quality ones, just because the further that I can keep the quality into the process, the better the song will be. It will make your files bigger at the end, but overall, this is uh, totally fine for me as I have a lot of space and I pay for Google Drive. So when I ship out the uh, packages that I want for my charts, I have enough space to do it. If you want to compress stuff, uh, there are different OGG levels that you want to get to. If I'm not mistaken, I think the one that you want is an uh, quality eight OGG file is like the minimum that they're trying to get. So you want um, like 256 kilobytes per second, kind of in that range to make sure the quality stays pretty good. Um, all that kind of stuff just is kind of audio head, very high quality, very picky. Um, but it is something that I've been directed by, by the people who chart professionally, uh, as I am just still, I would say, amateur at best at this kind of stuff. Um, so we're gonna make sure that this OGG goes back into the same spot. And export it. I'm gonna leave this open for now. And we'll go ahead and import that song audio. Here. So it was not able to read the FLAC when you're importing in here, so you make sure that it's either the MP3, like I said, or you make sure that it gets transported into the OGG file. So now we have the song files back here. And we have to start the timing process. So, um, the first thing that you can do is most songs you can look up on the internet. So 
So one of the things, if you can't find the song that you're looking for online, what you can do is there is a BPM calculator built into Moonscraper. So just go ahead and pause it. Um, make sure you're clicked into this box before you start it, because otherwise it's not going to read anything. So you start the song, click in here, and then tap whatever key you want to whenever you're hitting uh, count. So once do Scooby-Doo is in 4-4 four, four time, uh, more than likely it will be at least, unless there's some weird interactions that he does here. So we'll just go ahead and time it out and see what our BPM sets. So we got a couple measures through. Um, getting a nearest hole of 79 beats per minute. So as this song is supposed to be half drum time, that's probably about right. So we can go ahead and go into the global, go towards the front. And as we were hitting 79, we hit 79 BPM. So this is in 4-4 four, four time as well. So time signature here is correct. We don't have to change it normally. It'll stay in 4-4 four, four unless you're in a really, really weird song or if there's some interesting riffs, solos between measures at the end of something. Um, so you probably won't have to mess around with this for most pop songs or most rock songs in general, unless you're getting into some more niche uh, areas of the genres. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to insert silence at the front of the song to fill this gap. Uh, so we want the first full measure to be silent. That is a, a general rule of thumb for charting in this area, because whenever you load in a song, if the very start of it has a note, you're more than likely going to get surprised by it or get beat on it just because the game has to take time to load in the highway. That little rise up and show the screen and it makes all the sound effects. You want to make sure that that can happen during the song so it doesn't sneak up on you or anything. So the first thing that you can do is you can check this uh, top right corner. So you can check this top right corner here for a timestamp. Scroll until this hit bar is right on the first note. And as we're in the in-between, it's probably going to be at about 0.23. So you go from 0.23, and then you hover this bar over the start of the next measure. So 3.04 to 0.23. Difference in that, 3.04 minus 0.23. It's a 2.81 seconds of silence. So you just do that math. Edit whatever audio you're doing. Insert silence. 2.81 okay and then you re-export that file into the same spot that you had now the thing that is going to happen is it's going to auto read the uh, audio file if you keep it there so what we're going to do is save it save the chart And then we can re-export it, already exist, override it, cool. Come back in here, go back to the song properties, reload it, and now it's got that silence inserted all the way up to the first measure. So since the measure is close enough, what I uh, typically would do here is put my BPMs at the beginning of each measure now. So now that I can track the entirety of the song, it's got the silence where it needs to be, the BPM is close enough in that first measure that we can make it work, and now I just listen through the entirety of the song, placing a BPM every measure or two uh, all the way through it. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have about a minute of me doing that right now. All right, so we've went ahead and put all the BPMs through ev almost every measure, changed a couple of things just to make sure that it lines up. So on occasion, you'll have something like this where like 
in studio recordings are very very close but somebody will miss a downbeat or something you can just put like a 0.6 it doesn't have to be round numbers on the ppm just to make sure that it hits on this note exactly where you want it to be um, so the next thing that we're going to be doing as we have all of the placements done for the timing is we can go back out of global events and start placing our notes Um, so I've already done a sort of video on pitch theory uh, prior to this as a secondary kind of um, resource to this. So uh, this song in particular has a lot of guitar parts uh, stacked on top of each other. So what we're going to be listening through is for like a kind of main theme or um, whatever we can pick out of that kind of cuts through the sound a little bit more. And we're going to be charting for that guitar in particular. Um, so we're going to go ahead and listen to it through a couple of times, see what we can pick out and match from there. So there's a kind of bouncy little set in here. Do it here. I think these are all the same note. I'm going to slide that back a little bit. So what we're hearing here is... Same repetitive pattern through the first and second measures. So more than likely what we can do is shift click from first note to last note, control C, control V, just like you would in a Word document or anything like that. Just copy and paste it. So we've got our first couple of notes placed. Uh, the next thing that I need to talk about is note type. So if you see when I select multiple notes over here on the left you can flag it for different kinds of things um, so you can flag it for natural which will mean if the notes are very close to each other it'll go ahead and go into hammer on pull offs but since we're on 79 bpm it's not really that close in terms of being eighth or sixteenth notes it's um, gonna be kinda slow and more likely I want this strummed anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and strum it all of it and there are also shortcut keys that you can see that when they hover over the specific ones you can hit s if you want you can hit h you can hit t for tap notes but i'm going to keep it on strum so it'll let you flag any note that you like that way uh, the other sustains that you can have is you can cut sustains to zero you can maximize you can maximize the sustain so if we wanted these these blues to sustain just a little bit which is probably a good idea, it might be a little excessive, it maxes it to the next possible area. Um, as I have crossovers on, so sustain crossovers, it will uh, do it all the way into the next blue line, which is not what we want. Um, so we're going to go ahead and up our steps to about 64, and uh, extended sustains we can turn off. So we do that again. And then we max it. And now since extended sustains are off and my steps are high, it's pushing this extend just to the next possible note and also leaving a little bit of a gap as selected by one of the new tools. So you have um, sustain gap now in the settings. So as we're talking about sustains, uh, typically you don't want your sustains to touch up against the next note in the song. So you have to leave a little bit of a gap here so that this line ends before the actual note comes in. Uh, the suggested 
is about 60 to 70 um, milliseconds, which is what I have on. So you can set this now. So every time that you do a sustain, it will stop you before you get past the point that it is uh, no longer appropriate or proper. Now, if you want to have an extended sustain there, you just enable extended sustain, uh, sustains again. You can drag it past. But when you get to the next note, as previously discussed, it will stop it before it hits there. Um, so I'm just going to toggle that back off with the key. And we can go through these other ones. So we've got our first couple sections through. And we can just right click and drag up here as well. If you don't want to use these sustains. So instead of doing the mass select max like I had been doing, you can just click on the specific one, right click and hold, and then drag it up to the next spot that you want it to be and it'll still stop you. So we've gotten through note placement. Uh, we've gotten through sustains. We've gotten through taps, hammer-ons, everything that you would need to do in terms of placing notes. So the next thing that we're going to do is talk a little bit more about these tools over here on the left. Uh, so the eraser is an obvious answer. It just takes whatever note you had placed, moves it out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and put that back to where we want it because we had it. And the next thing up that we have is the star power replacements. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be putting it right here. I'm just showing where it would be in general or how you would use the star power. So it's click and then drag your left mouse as far as you want the star power phrase to go and then let go. And now you have this little blue bar here on the right tells you where your star power phrases are. So when you play this through the song, when you hit this next to or when you hit this last note in the phrase, you get your star power as long as you didn't miss anything on the in-betweens. So easy star power placement there. We've already gone over the BPM tool. We've already gone over the time signature tool. Those are in global events. So if you place them here, all you need to know about these is if you change them in terms of the time signature, you have to make sure the time signature events happen at the front of a measure. So this highlighted bar that's like thicker than all the other ones, make sure your time signature changes happen on those lines. Otherwise, it will throw off time signature and your chart will look wonky when you export it into Clone Hero. Um, so a couple of other global events we can talk about is we can talk about sections. So uh, at the end, when you get your uh, your score breakdown in Clone Hero, you get a section breakdown, which will allow you to go through and practice specific parts of a song that are more difficult or let you see which parts of a song you missed in, all that kind of stuff. So you just use this, click it on the right side, change the title. Uh, we're going to say just introduction is typically like a really good one. You can name them really cool things, really funny things. You can name them boring. You can name them however you want. Just make sure that you kind of place those every couple of measures to make sure that everybody has a general sense of um, which sections are pretty long. And you typically can break some sections up into like an A, B, or C part if the solo starts to change. So again, all preferential treatment stuff, but typically I tend to do a section every eight to 16 measures, unless it's a really short song like this, in which case I might do four. So we'll have to see. Um, so we get our first verse. So there's our first two sections. So we have their intro, first verse. Or I guess we can call it like kind of a chorus-ish. So it's like a bridge. So soft chorus eraser works on these as well. So here's our solo. We talk about solo markers in a second right after we get through this listen. So when we're talking about solos, the next thing we can look at is the non-global event shortcuts here. So make sure that it's out of the blue flag. You want the red flags here. 
and you tag here, solo start or just solo. Listen to the entire thing. And that's the end of the solo. So you just hit solo end. So now when you play through this section in Clone Hero, and I'll mark it with that percentage, and it'll give you the uh, choke, awesome choke, good solo uh, pop-ups whenever you finish all the notes that are in this section. So we've got this through, got our first couple of placements through the first chorus. We'll go ahead and do all the placements here. But before we talk about that, we're going to discuss uh, lyrics, which is typically the last thing that I do in charts. But as I'm not going to be finishing this chart during the recording, I don't think uh, we're going to go ahead and do the lyrics now. At the very bottom of tools, you have lyric editor. So before, on my first video, when I was talking about how you need to do uh, lyrics, you were placing an event every 10 to 15, you know, milliseconds about songs that were going really fast. Um, so what you can do now in the current build of Moonscraper is you can go through, get the lyric sheet, from whatever song you want and copy and paste it into this input lyrics. So it looks like we were right on the money with these lyric sheets that I just found. So the thing that you have to do with these is you have to put breaks in between them for it to understand syllables. So what I'm gonna be doing is just inserting dashes for every syllable that we want. So the thing that we're gonna be doing now is placing where the lyrics go. So what you wanna do is just listen to the song and you click set time for each syllable as it comes along. Or you can hit enter, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. going to take a break here i missed a couple of placements but essentially what i'm doing is while he's singing the specific syllable i'm just holding down the enter key you'll see this little orange thing pop up as it's on the syllable that i'm on i lift it i tap it again for the next syllable i hold it until he's done with that so the second that you hit the button it starts the syllable and as he's singing it through you hold it so if he sustains any specific lyrics you go through there so i'm going to back up just a little bit and replace a couple things here So what I'm going to do is right click on the specific thing that I misplaced and go back to the bridge. So everything that I right clicked on just got reset. And if you need any of this kind of stuff, uh, it's in this little help. There's a video tutorial on it as well. Uh, it's probably better than anything that I can say at this. But as it says, it needs to be formatted in a specific way. So the bullets are separated with a dash. Characters and phrases are separated with line breaks like a space. An equals character should be used to substitute a literal hyphen character and it will be reconverted by games like Clone Hero. Backtick characters are used to sub substitute quotes. Um, so if you really want to do any kind of quotations or anything, you got to mess around with the phrasing, but the, all of the stuff in there is, uh, is explained if you forget or if you need to run through it a couple of times. So like technically, since I wanted a dash for Scooby-Doo, I would go back through and it said an equal sign. 
So I just place those there. Now I'm pretty sure the equal sign will break it as a syllable as well. But we'll see if that actually comes to true or not. But since I changed the lyrics, now we've restarted the entire process. So make sure that when you put your lyrics in, you proofread them at the start. Because otherwise, if you make any changes, you're going to have to rechart all the lyrics and replace them again. So we'll just go through and listen to them again. So I'm not very happy with that last placement. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this last set. I still don't like it. There it is. Okay. So now, when you listen to your song, what it should be doing is tracking your lyrics on this page from front to back. As you place them, you can watch it, make sure it matches. Pretty close. So that makes lyrics 10 times easier. Now we're done. Lyrics for me, at least two years ago, used to take hour, hour and a half, a lot of placements. But if you know the song well enough, which you will after listening to it and charting it for back to back to back to back to back listens, you'll know every intricate section. You can quickly redo some stuff. Just make sure that you have all the lyrics formatted properly, you proofread it, you do it a couple of times over, because if you have to make any changes afterwards, it will re-chart everything. So it'll wipe all your progress if you have to change any notes or change any letters or change any formats. So we've got the lyrics done. Uh, we would have the chart done if we have through here. So we're pretty much done with our chart, uh, disregarding the fact that I didn't actually finish it. But I'm not gonna do that today, I'll do it later. save that chart and export it with a clone hero package and we don't need any delays or anything of that sort so one of the things that I said in the last one is delay offsets um, they've been pretty much taken out of the game so delay offsets is not what you want to do you want to do those uh, silence inserts that we were talking about at the beginning so if you had anything that was here don't need to do any of that but we can talk about the copy down to empty difficulties. So if you were to chart an entire song in expert, which is generally how most songs are charted, um, you can copy that down in expert mode to all of the abilities below it, or uh, the difficulties, I should say. So if you copy everything down, whatever you chart in expert will become hard, medium, easy. Uh, easiest way to do that is leave it alone. Don't do it unless you're actually intentionally charting for hard or medium because the things that you have to avoid in expert mode um, are things that you have to avoid in easy. You have to, you can put in medium. Like easy is supposed to be green through yellow only. That's it. Medium, you're supposed to add in the blue. Hard, you're supposed to add in the orange. Expert, typically, um, pretty much anything goes, but... I've heard a lot of people say that the hard difficulty is not supposed to be using open strum. Um, that has been one suggestion that I've heard from people. I've also heard a couple of other things about just like the notes per second speed are supposed to be limited and hard. So like, you know, it's not supposed to be an exact note to note chart. Expert, pretty much exact note to note as close as you can get unless you're over charting for purposes of comedy or difficulty on purpose. Um, that is up to your discretion and as long as the chart is fun enough for most people to play i don't really care at that point so the other thing that you can do after you finish this you finish your expert guitar chart is you can go over and change the instrument that you want to chart for so you can chart for a second guitar for co-op you can chart for bass you can chart for rhythm guitar you can chart for drums keys guitar hero live guitar which is the uh, six fret three by two stacks um, you can do any of those things charting in this thing and here's the low here's the high drums as both pro drums and standard pro drums gives you options you can change four lane to five lane typically four lane is the standard pro drums allows for the um 
excessive uh i don't know con excessive contact hits so that's like the uh the drum that will allow you to you have to hit it harder for it to read or you can put that as a separate um tom tom slash hi-hat slash whatever tom drum tom 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 tom's a gps i think either way you can chart for that as well and as this is a half drum song i probably will end up charting a drum chart for it so we'll keep it to guitar only so the last thing that we want to check before we actually do that export is make sure the star powers are placed i've talked about them i'm not going to place them here because the chart's not actually done but what we are going to do is you can check this side to my right so if i turn off my webcam over here, whenever you place that star power as discussed, you have blues. I try to make sure that there's not one star power section uh, doubled up in the same like type of section or like back to back. So pace them out well enough. Uh, the time based off of the song length is typically the indicator of how many star power phrases you have. Like a normal three to four minute song has eight to 10. So my song's a minute and a half if that, so I'd probably put it somewhere around two to three at most. Um, so don't overdo it. Try to make the scores as accurate as possible for comparisons and length and difficulty, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it will make your chart look a lot better if you do them properly. Um, besides that, a couple of the other key things that we can discuss, we've done instruments. We've done difficulty. We've done song properties here. Um, oh, we haven't done song properties, actually. This is pretty similar to the, the last thing that we did. So just at the start of everything that you make, just input all the artist info. All of the stems out, you can do that. You can add crowd audio. You can add vocal audio. Anything that you can get stemmed, you can switch them around here, but this is just the bass song is typically what you want to use if you're doing just a basic chart. The next thing that we can do is the INI editor. So this is what we're going to see in the game files. So you add CH, general settings, and CH tags. As you've already input them here, they come through here, off rip. Uh, you can add your difficulties. You can add your icon info. Uh, the charter, we'll change that later because I like a specific formatting of mine. Um, playlist track, I'm not doing any playlist things. It's album track six, no delays, preview start time. I have a specific formatting for mine. Give us a nice little in-between spot. A uh, funny number. So that's all set. Make sure you save it again with all that background info, because it'll keep it on there. Export, clone hero package, export, put it in the right spot. Right bow, put it in my songs folder under my charts, select. Here it's in here, at the bottom. So I like naming my folders based off of the artist first, song second. So here it is. We've got our three in there. So the only thing we're missing now is album art from that folder. So we'll go get Alex Melton, hypothetical volume one album art. 640, 640 is not bad. So we'll save that image. Put it in the Alex Melton What's New Scooby-Doo as just album. Album.jpg. And there it is. So this is a full folder. So you have the album art, you have the notes in the chart itself, you have the song information, and you have the song audio. So that should be everything that we would need to pull up Lone Hero right now and play it. So 
now that we've loaded everything up it's got the album artwork we picked out it's got our icon in there it's got all the information now I would normally I would normally I would normally put a difficulty here but as we didn't finish this chart doesn't really matter that much you go in it's gonna play our first couple of notes it's not on bot but it's there Lyrics are here. Everything that we want is here. So it should be set to go. So that is pretty much everything that you need to know to get started charting. In terms of charting in general, I've made a couple of videos on more advanced techniques like pitch theory and like when you're running through. If you want to see more of my process of that, I have a full uh, charting video already uploaded. But I might actually do another one of those at some point to do my full process since it is a lot faster now um, and my charting is a little bit more uh, honed. So if anybody is interested in that, leave a comment down below. We'll see the next time that I make a chart for somebody or get commissioned to make one or just find one that I'm really interested and in, really excited about. I'll make sure I record that entire process. Um, but for now, hope this video does a decent job of getting some of those updates into the new Moon Scraper software and allows a lot more people to get into just basic levels of charting uh, to make charts for yourself, to have fun with the game, because ultimately that's what the community is all about. So hope everybody has uh, enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to stick around for a couple more charts. I've got a lot of my own charts posted here on this channel. I haven't been streaming as much lately, but uh, if you're looking for them, some of them are on Chorus now, a couple of them are not. Uh, so if you're really looking for anything specific, stick on this channel. A lot of those downloads are still on my Google Drive, which I will leave in the uh, description down below. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a good time charting and happy playing everybody. Deuces.